coming in. Well, that is the Finance Minister. Joining me now to take this discussion forward, Rashesh Shah, the Chairman and CEO of Edelweiss Group. Uh, he's also the former President of PICI. We also have with us Ajay Sai, the Director General and CEO of the Federation of Indian Export Organization. Anil Bhardwaj, the Secretary General of the Federation of Indian Micro and Small Medium Enterprises. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on the program. Uh, Rashesh, let me start by asking you, you heard what the Finance Minister has to say. There's also a slew of data uh, that seems to suggest that there is an uptick in the economy, at least as far as large parts of the formal economy is concerned. In fact, there's an interesting comment that has come in from the management of Tata Motors post their earnings today. Uh, NBFCs are supporting financing with a vengeance. Uh, Rashesh, what do you make of this? Actually, we have seen a clear uptick and I think, you know, uh, this started around August. So if you look at April, May, June, July, there, were, there was a lot of panic, there was a lot of concern but we started seeing the uptick in August, so mainly out of, you know, the fact that COVID was not as bad as people expected. Uh, the fear was much higher than the reality. A lot of government schemes, RBI schemes started coming into play and the economy started unlocking. So I think August, September and October have been very, very encouraging. And uh, I think liquidity has improved a lot. So, you know, if I look back, I would say April, May, June was more like a crisis. And now we have clearly August onwards made a U-turn. Now, still we should be careful because uh, the resurgence is not across the economy. It is very patchy. Part of this is pent up demand and part of this is actually the you know resurgence of the underlying consumption patterns in the economy. Uh, like rural economy is doing well, but urban is still not as back on track as we want. So I think we need to be careful. But clearly the crisis is over now if at all anything there is a challenge the challenge of investment and growth going forward but i think we have done a good thing we have at least averted a crisis which was very much in the air around april may june okay so you're saying that the, uh, the crisis is behind us but we still have challenging times and you're right uh, that the recovery that we are seeing uh, is perhaps not as broad based as one would like uh, it is patchy and it's playing out differently for different sectors but let me ask you about the next set of measures i'm asking you this because the finance minister has held out hope that there is a next set of stimulus measures that will be announced this has now been confirmed by uh, various government officials as well so what is industry expecting now in terms of the next set of stimulus measures what should be the target I think uh, the best thing the government can do and actually it has done in the last few months government has given a lot of liquidity to the real uh, to the rural economy the 3 lakh crore MSME the Atman Nirbhar Bharat scheme has been a fairly big game changer the PCG schemes have been good for NBFCs so I think government has done quite a bit on the liquidity side now, I think government needs to push on consumption and investment side. On consumption side, I would say the stimulus will be, should be in the form of putting money in the hands of people, uh, maybe, a, uh, you know, some amount of GST rate cut on consumables and others. I know we all talk about how much space the government has, but I think government has space. Uh, this is the year they can uh, expand the fiscal budget a little bit more. So the next round should focus on getting okay. consumption revived strongly and then eventually how to get investments back on track. And one of the key thing about investments is going to be the long term ease of doing business, the long term, you know, investment climate that we need to improve. Yeah. And, you know, you know, strangely on the hmm. on the long term investment side, equity availability has improved a lot. We're seeing IPOs doing well. A lot of FDI equity has come, but the credit yeah. markets are still dislocated. Yeah. So government should do a set of things to bring credit availability back in the economy because even today credit is growing at only 3 to 4 percent and we cannot really be back to structural growth unless credit growth at least gets to 10-12 percent yeah. per year. 
Yes, uh, so credit growth continues to be constrained. Uh, uh, the credit market still dislocated and you believe that uh, the next set of stimulus measures, the government ought to put money into the hands of the consumers. Whether that is going to be part of the plan, uh, we don't know. But let me go across to Ajay Sahai of FIO. Mr. Sahai, many thanks for joining us. Uh, what are exporters telling you at this point in time uh, in terms of revival, in terms of recovery, and more importantly, the sustainability of the recovery? Uh, also, what we are starting to see is that global growth had picked up uh, the global recovery was underway but now we are starting to see a resurgence of covid cases across europe and the us is that causing consternation at this point in time in fact uh, if you're talking about the global trade i think the recovery is much faster than what we anticipated and that is borne by the data by the international agencies also angtad has recently came up with the report which says that the contraction in the third quarter was just 4.5% as against 19% in the second quarter and they say that uh, in fourth quarter it will be around 3%. So if you are looking into 2020, okay. the global trade decline is expected to be around 7% as against 13 to 32% which mm. was forecasted in April. So we are in much better situation than what we mm. anticipated and coming back to India, I think we have done remarkably well. We were down by around 60% in the month of mm. April. In September, the recent data shows that we were positive by 5% and in 22 out of 30 product mm. group, we were positive. Uh, so far as we are looking into medium to long term mm. basis, I think there is huge demands, huge inquiries which are coming to the country. We are getting a lot of inquiries from the countries which were totally unknown to us we are getting more inquiries from the country where anti-china oh. sentiment is on the rise whether we are about the us australia canada japan south korea some of the countries like france germany or sweden uh, in fact uh, those who were talking about mm -hmm. the christmas and new years now they feel that the inventory level will be recreated very fast and they will be having much better order okay. coming into the way uh, in fact, in many of the segments, we have done remarkably well, particularly if you're talking about the chemical, plastics, pharmaceuticals, medical and diagnostic mm. equipment, food products across many sectors. Mm. Uh, some of the traditional sectors of sports were under severe pressure, but they are also coming out of it. And in those segments, we are getting demand, which okay. is on short term basis, not a very long term basis. Normally in textile and leather, we used to have a lead time of around six yeah. months from order to execution, which has been compressed. Mm. But apart from these sectors, I think we have done remarkably well. And uh, I think some of the challenges on the supply side, uh, they are a cause of concern, including the yeah. local lockdown at some places, the shortage of manpower. Now we are having container shortage because of the mismatch between imports and exports. The freight has gone up. So I think we have more on the supply side challenges than on the demand side for export. Okay, so uh, uh, supply side challenges, demand has picked up and has picked up better than anticipated. A global recovery in trade is certainly helping Indian exporters. Mr. Sai, since you spoke about challenges, let me ask you specifically about some of the challenges that have come to our notice. You talked about the mismatch as far as containers are concerned because of the misalignment of imports and exports. We're also hearing about significant delays at ports and largely we're given to understand it's because of the rollout of the faceless assessment. Uh, how much of a concern is that, especially as you anticipate demand picking up? And secondly, uh, the MEIS, because uh, we're given to understand again that uh, the flow through has not happened on the ground. Even the reworked scheme, uh, the, the flow hasn't happened on the ground. So is that a cause of concern today? In fact, there are a couple of reasons why there is not adequate cap availability of container. One is definitely the mismatch. Secondly, I think uh, shipping lines, many of the shipping lines are also not calling at the Indian ports and large vessels are not coming to India. Thirdly, we have seen the pharma station in some part of the country and containers have been stuck up. You have also said that, uh, and I agree with you, that faceless assessment which has been rolled in by the customs at some of the places that has also delayed the clearance of the consignment but on an overall basis i think faceless assessment has mm. definitely helped the trade but these are the teething problem with which we have to live it on on the long term i am sure that faceless assessment okay. is going to be a game changer 
so far the mei's benefit is concerned uh, we do agree with you that from uh, april onwards there has been not an actual flow of the mei's this is something which uh, few and other trade bodies has raised in a meeting with the honorable minister and he has assured that he is working with the ministry of finance so the funds are released to the export sector quickly uh, i do agree that uh, liquidity is definitely a challenge for export sector and whatever benefit which government can give to the export sector if they are released in time they will help us yeah. in this time of recovery Okay, so that is the hope at this point in time. Let me bring in the view from the MSME world. Anil Bhardwaj of Pismi also with us. Mr. Bhardwaj, many thanks for joining us. My colleague Sapna Das reporting today, of course, this is still source-based information, that the government may extend the MSME credit scheme so that the entire 3 lakh crore rupees can, uh, in fact, be utilized. Uh, uh, can you give me a sense of what business confidence is like at this point in time for the MSME ecosystem? Uh, what's the stage of recovery? Uh, are you starting to see people high? ring now uh, just an update on where things currently stand see clearly the economy is in the restarting mode uh, but at the same the present surge mm. in demand is propelled by the pent up demand and partly because of the momentum in public buying and on top of it now we are in the midst of festive season starting from shrad navratras and we see uh, because we know that almost uh, 35 to 40% of the purchases especially in the white goods sector and the smaller segment of automobile usually takes mm. place in this season so we are in uh, i would say a very benign phase and uh, uh, but at the same mm. time you know uh, the moot question is going to be whether it would be sustained uh, after say february right our experience is that uh, uh, mm. the feedback that we are getting from the ground that the lower middle class is really hit especially in the urban centers because of losses uh, of jobs in travel and tourism in mm. and services sector particularly the hotel industry and the restaurant business etc so very yeah. large uh, segment mm. of people mm. are displaced and affected and that would uh, i think uh, drag the growth after february once this momentum of festive season is gone that's what the feeling uh, we are having but at the same time government is trying its best okay. by propelling the growth maybe after february also uh, through the public mm. buying a massive amount of dose of public buying is happening yeah. and that that many of the segments in the msme sector are ex experiencing hmm okay so the the hope is that this will at least continue to february if not longer but the worry is that it may not sustain beyond february rashish shah let me come back to you now with that uh, question uh, you know how much of this is pent up how much of this is real demand are we making up for what we lost between april uh, to uh, to august uh, and to anil bhardwaj's point that services sector and that continues to be uh, a large part of the economy that is challenged and constrained uh, will we see this peter out post the festive season what are the indicators that you're going to be watching out for i think uh, our, our expectation is that for the next four quarters we cannot take any revival for granted we government rbi all of us have to constantly do a set of things to make sure this will sustain so whatever we have done and the pent up demand if it takes you to a good you know q3 and maybe part of q4 you still have to do a set of things i think liquidity interest rate cut uh, credit transmission all these are going to be important as i said earlier government's ability to put cash in the hands of people government spending government capex is going to be an important one i think a lot of foreign inflows both in equity markets and credit market will be important because international rates are low which is a big positive for india because we can really get some good uh capital at a low cost but long term and you know risk bearing capital because that is what india needs and that's what happening with fbi uh, you know fdi coming into india so overall we need all that we think over the next four quarters the virus is going to be around uh, the impact will get weaker and weaker but until we get the vaccine and the vaccine is delivered there will be a little bit of open and shut if you see a lot of countries around the world we are seeing open shut open shut so there is going to be a little bit of disruption yeah. ongoing for the next four quarters and we will need counter balancing measures from the government and rbi to 
ensure that so so idea is not to take anything for granted and if you think this current set of measures will take you for next 3 4 months it's to start planning for another 3 4 months and 3 4 months after that but i think there has to be a concrete active intervention oriented plan from the rbi and, and the and the government of india for the next four quarters you know you spoke about the intervention that you would now like to see from the government as far as the next set of stimulus measures are concerned what's the expectation from the rbi the governor has made it clear that the rbi is standing ready standing watch to intervene uh, as and when necessary uh, we've of course got the next uh, mpc meeting coming up in december but what's the expectation from the regulator ashish see i think one of the key things that is remaining for rbi to do is to bring the long term interest rates down and really get credit transmission done you know the i think liquidity is at the short end and uh, what we call interest rate transmission is at the short end the long end the long term money the 3 year 5 year 7 year 10 year money is still fairly expensive and not as easily available so i would say the two things rbi needs to do and he's been doing this you know very the ltro and tltros and all are there to target long term yeah. liquidity availability for the economy but i would say bringing down long term rates mm. bringing down inflationary expectations and making credit available not just liquidity you know all of us assume that liquidity is equal to credit right. but we now have a situation where there is a lot of liquidity but not enough credit available and we have to convert liquidity into credit for the economic growth to restart hmm Ajay Sai, let me ask you that. As uh, Rashesh was pointing out, uh, enough liquidity in the system, but not necessarily credit. Is that a factor uh, that uh, you're faced with as well? And uh, since you do believe that demand is likely to hold and at least uh, uh, is expected to pick up from where it currently is, what is the situation? Are we starting to see uh, people hiring our exporters, uh, provisioning for more uh, capacity, etc.? on the first issue uh, we do agree that if you look into last 2 to 3 years the flow of export credit to export sector has declined in fact in 2018 19 that was around 26% and last year it was around 12% when in rupee term our exports went up so definitely there is mismatch between the requirement of the export sector and the export credit and rbi has moved proactively that they have brought the entire export sector under the priority sector lending and government has also provided interest equalization benefit to all the msme sector and to 416 tariff line so i think on the credit front we are much comfortable position now so far as the issue of uh, these demands are concerned i feel that the demand is there and people they may not have started hiring it because still they do not know how long that why i said that if you are talking about the sme sector mm. they are basically getting the order for a very short duration they get the order for uh, in the month of let us say september for execution in the month of november they are not getting the order on a long term basis okay. so uh, though of course i think the on okay. the employment sector exports is now providing much better employment in terms of numbers uh, but if mm. you are looking into the additional absorption of the workforce in the export sector i think it has not started on a large scale basis though definitely we are moving into that okay. direction uh, but i'm sure that as we move along and we are started getting order on a long term mm -hmm. basis this uh, sector will be providing much more employment one of good thing which has happened that lot of uh, countries have shown interest in investment even now we are getting the inquiries from other parts of the country where companies want to invest mm. in indian mm. medium sector or the small sector and i think that's a very good sign for exports okay. uh, i feel that at this point of time uh, we would also like the government to put little more focus on r&d spending of the company because i personally feel that if the uh, country's export has to be on a sustained basis the focus has to be on r&d and innovation um, we need to provide some more support mm. to r&d and we also bring our focus on the okay. standards uh, though of course in last two three years we have seen that uh, government is working hard to put focus on the standards we need to develop standards we have to apply those standards sure. on the domestic company similarly on imports yeah. which will all also make it our export product more export worthy but will also help us to address the issue Absolutely. of keep imports happening into the country 
uh, yes, uh, that, that certainly is something that uh, uh, has been an ongoing process. Anil Bhadwaj, I'll end by asking you to the point that Ajay Sahai was making, uh, you know, that uh, there's a lot of inquiries coming in from countries across the world who are looking at uh, mitigating the risks of only dealing with China. Now, what is the real impact of that that you're seeing as far as the MSME sector? Uh, you know, what kind of implications, benefits do you believe it's likely to have in the next few months? See, first of all, the similar phenomena is also being experienced by MSMEs who are just getting to the domestic market. They are also not getting long-term orders mm. and usually the orders are of the range of approximately one month or so. So uh, I think that has something to do with uh, because people are not really very sure that what is going to happen in the next quarter. So it's, it's kind of a month to month basis in the domestic market and that's why people are not investing and that's why the demand that was envisaged by the government of the credit is not as much as perhaps was the case uh, when, when the scheme was designed on 3 lakh crore as you know barely 65-70% hmm. uh, disbursement so far has taken place. It's still remaining and maybe as you, as you right said in the beginning uh, there is a case for extension also. So yes. Uh, secondly, yeah. coming to the point of liquidity, see in the informal market in these mm -hmm. festive season, uh, the call rate used to go up to 3% uh, per month. But now even one and a half percent, half of the rate of interest, uh, the money is available in plenty. Mm -hmm. And that shows that, you know, the demand uh, for, mm -hmm. for credit is not as much as is used to be in the, even in this festive season. So yes, your initial insertion in, uh, okay. was, was right. All right, uh, Anil Bhardwaj, Ajay Sahai, Rashesh, uh, thanks very much for joining us with your take uh, on the recovery, the road to revival, and of course, what we make of the many data points that have emerged and what next needs to be done by government, industry, and the regulator. We are seeing a recovery. The question, though, is will it hold beyond the festive season? The hope is that it will. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of Restarting India. Many thanks for watching. Do stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. The news will continue.